Mining is an intense and highly complicated operation. The standard sequence of events for an open pit mine begins with drilling narrow holes, then stuffing these holes with explosives, then loading the rubble onto powerful trucks to haul away the excess material and dump it safely elsewhere. And this is the fastest and most efficient way to mine that exists with modern technology. Thankfully, we are far past modern technology in Minecraft where we have the netherite pickaxe, a demonic beast of a tool that can demolish your measly stone. There are two in-game possible additions to the pickaxe, the efficiency enchantment and the haste buff. Combined to their full potential, you produce the best possible mining tool in the game. In this video, I'm bringing the pickaxe and several other mechanics of the game to the real world to see the highly interesting physics behind mining up the entire planet, made extra interesting by the player's ability to mine a block, then have it essentially disappear into some kind of wormhole within their pocket. The goal will be to calculate the total time it takes, which is the amount of material divided by the rate at which we break the material. The calculation for this is not as straightforward as it may seem, in that you can't simply divide the volume of the earth by the block breaking speed of the pickaxe. We are imagining a person taking on the task, or at least not an infinitely powered machine. Therefore we need to add to our calculations how gravity changes as you break apart the planet. Now the mineral composition of the planet does vary as you dig down, in fact past the crust it's all mostly liquid, but we'll only account for the densities when considering the change in gravity and instead assume that there's a uniform composition of material throughout the planet. We'll start with the key in-game mechanics. The speed that a pickaxe mines a block is based on this algorithm. Found on the Minecraft wiki, you can take a block's hardness, uh, we'll be using the most standard of blocks, which is the smooth stone. Then you also factor in the type of pickaxe you're using, wooden being the slowest and gold being the fastest. Now if you go through this algorithm with uh, high enchanted pickaxes and haste and everything, you'll get values less than 0.05 seconds. First of all, all the speeds in Minecraft are broken down into twentieths of seconds and the absolute fastest can still only be a single tick, which is a twentieth of a second, or that uh, 0.05 seconds I mentioned. So that's how fast our fastest tool will be, but uh, I did this for the rest of the tools, and you'll have 0.55 seconds at the low end for the wooden pickaxe, still having the haste 2 buff. So now for the physics. We need to use physics to find the rate at which blocks are broken on Earth. It's mainly a matter of finding the relationships between existing values we know. We have a rate of block breaking on the Minecraft world, and we have the gravity there, which we calculated as 20 meters per second squared in my aero velocity video. Watch that too if you haven't already. So now the best way to go about this is recognizing first of all that the rate at which blocks are broken varies inversely with the gravitational acceleration, in that when the gravitational acceleration increases, the rate uh, that we're breaking at would decrease. So you can write an equation like this, where 20 blocks per second, the block breaking speed uh, with the max pick on the Minecraft world, equals 1 over the gravitational acceleration on the Minecraft world, which again we calculated as 20 meters per second squared. And this would be multiplied times some constant, which we can label as anything really, maybe just a pickaxe simple. This constant essentially does the work for us of relating the gravitational acceleration with the rate at which blocks are broken. So in this case the constant would be 400, and if we do it for the rest of them we get these values. At first I actually considered placing gravity in the block breaking rate using the distance swung by the pickaxe and the mass of the pickaxe, but it's all unnecessary when all we need is an equation for the rate of change. We're not finished uh, with getting the function for a rate of block breaking get as we want to see now how gravity changes. When we are on our way destroying Earth, we could forget that we are reducing both its mass and reducing its radius. And if you recall Newton's laws of gravitation, it has the acceleration dependence on both of these values. Let us assume that we're digging at a depth of a one meter layer, layer by layer until we reach the core so it would basically look like a slow version of this. Now like any good investigator, I used the help of Wikipedia to make firm conclusions, but not before intuitively understanding what is going on. We must follow the Newtonian law of gravitation, stating that the gravitational acceleration is equal to the mass of the planet times the g constant, 
divided by the radius squared. So to reiterate, as we dig, we reduce both of these things, but actually in accordance with the inverse square law, if we were to just dig down without doing the whole surface area, gravity changes the same because of this law. We're essentially we're ignoring all this excess material and just considering the mass as a single point right at the center. So the gravity at this point, where he's a certain radius down, or I guess just radius of the total planet, would be found using the mass of this concentric sphere that you can form with that radius. Now the mass at any radius is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed times the density of the planet. Remember that mass is volume times density. And if you plug that into the gravitation formula, you produce this formula, or a function rather. And this is assuming that the density is uniform throughout the planet, so it produces a linear function. The density, in fact, changes layer by layer, but to simplify it, we'll assume that it changes linearly from the surface to the core. We'll say it goes from about 3,000 kilograms meters cubed to 13,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So with this uh, formula, you can plug it into our gravitation formula that we developed, and you get this total formula, or function rather, for how gravity changes as a function of depth. Not too different from the experimentally determined model shown here. At this point we have everything we need but let's check a few things. When we plot this function we should have the acceleration equal to 9.81 meters per second squared when the radius equals the radius of the earth. As a matter of fact it would be the parabola's vertex. When I try calculating the same with this function, even playing around with the densities, I can't seem to get the right value for that vertex. Luckily, we know that because the degree of our function is 2, we are following a parabola, so we can use this ordered pair as the vertex, and use 0, 0 as another point to derive the corrected version. I'll just plug it into a calculator and produce this function. Plotting this gives us exactly what we want, and is only slightly different from the one we made. Finally, we have a function for the rate of block breaking as it relates to gravity, just by dividing the constants uh, we found over the function for gravity. So our goal is to destroy the entire volume layer by layer, so we can actually take each layer and divide it by our block breaking rate function, and we just have to do this for every radius from 1 to 6,371,000. Uh, if you have much experience with college level math, you will know how to solve such a problem. You integrate the function and produce a total time value. So if we start digging now with our max pickaxe, haste and everything, it will take a whopping 379 billion years. Surprising indeed as to how massive the earth is and comparing this with the number if we were to just divide the volume by the rate like I said not to. well. Here's the reason, you'll get a time that's about 5 times larger. Anyway, if we do the same using the constants for all the other pickaxes we were testing, then you can get this table, showing that it would take over 4 trillion years to complete such attacks with a uh, wooden pickaxe. So to conclude, maybe these fictional yet godly powerful tools are not quite suitable for the job. What would really work is teamwork. A team of a few thousand people could potentially bring this down to a manageable couple million years. Anyway, thank you for watching. With so much interpretive data, I would like to hear your thoughts and ideas in the comments as well as suggestions for the next video.